The Punisher video game from 2004. This is, of course, a tie-in. This is an... a licensed video game for the movie, so it was rushed. It's also kind of interesting with the plot, because it kind of takes place both during the movie and after it. You fight the Russian, and it's literally the same situation, you know, you open the door thinking it's like Joan with her cookies or something, and then the Russian pounces on you, but you also have all these references to how, I'm not going to say exactly which, but something that happened at the end of the movie, how that has already happened. You know, and you're not fighting the people you fought in the movie, other than the Russian. You're fighting Jigsaw. And... It does tie in with the movie. There's an explanation to who exactly it is, and I will not give it away. It would be a spoiler for the movie, and maybe also the game. Basically, the game is a third-person action shooter. It's a bit like a low-rent Max Payne. You can do the dodge move, you just, there is no bullet time. The thing that the game has that I think really fits and really works is that, well, you can only carry two weapons, basically but you can carry dual of both of them if you want, and if there are guns that can be carried dual. You can't carry two sniper rifles or two grenade launchers. I think it's grenade launcher. But pretty much everything else, and that includes the delicious M60 machine gun, you can dual wield. You can carry one rifle, or two, and uh, as long as they're of the same kind, and one type of pistol. Again, basically always two. I don't think there's a single one of the pistols that you can only carry one of. You can run out of ammo, and then you can just replace those guns with something else you find on the ground, but you cannot stock any other weapons than those two types. You also have grenades. And... Basically, you run through the levels, and there are a ton of adversaries. And the basic idea is that it's not difficult to kill them most of the time, but you earn extra points by mixing up how you kill and getting creative and not getting hit yourself. Whenever you get hit yourself, you lose the combos that you've done. Combos are earned by killing every time you kill someone and they get especially high when you change the mode of your killing. You know, you're not gonna earn a lot of them, these points by just shooting everyone, especially with the same gun and in the same place, or in the same way. But if you every so often kill someone you know, close range, if you throw a grenade, you know, various things, you're gonna earn more and it's gonna keep adding up in combos and sometimes you get like multipliers making sure that your points really rake up nicely. So basically mix up your kills, do not get hit. That is the main challenge of the game. It does get kind of difficult later on but other than that, that is the main point. I should maybe talk about the interrogation system. There, basically, there are a number of individuals in the levels that has have information, and you want that information. They're not going to give it up willingly, so you're going to torture them or threaten them. Basically, there are four regular ones that you can do anywhere. You can slam their face into the ground. You can threaten them with you know, threaten them with pulling the trigger on them, you know, blow their head, clean off. You can choke them, and you can punch them. These you can do any place. And then there are also specific ones that are tied to specific locations. And 
these are very nice, very interesting. At one point you're in a zoo and one of them is threatening to toss the guy into the piranha pool. Or you can threaten them by pushing them right up against the bars of the chamber or whatever for the rhinoceros. With any interrogation you can kill the subject, but that's not really what you want to do. You lose some of your combo points if you do, and you'll definitely want to make sure that you have gotten the information before you do anything like killing them. Basically there's a bar and you have to fill it to a certain level. If you fill it all the way you might kill them or if it's like the beating or face smashing things like that you can gradually you gradually hurt them and if you push it too far you will kill them you know at a certain point there's no more health bar and basically you have to get it to a certain level of the bar and keep it there for three seconds this is a lot of fun and it's one of the things in the game that really is different from the other games because other than that the game is pretty much a straightforward third person action shooter. Uh, the idea is to get the information and knock the guy out, usually. There are also specific kill zones where you can kill someone in a specific way, such as hurling them onto the horn, I guess the tooth, whatever, of a stuffed uh, elephant, not stuffed. Um, you know, when you kill them and then you get the head mounted on the wall, that kind of, so it's real ivory going straight through that torso. There, you can always grab an enemy, except for some of the bosses, obviously, but if you can run up to them, and you usually can, because you can, you're the Punisher, you can take a couple of hits. You can grab them, and that's when you can interrogate them, or you can walk around with them. You you can use them as a human shield. You know, if you have a weapon out, you can be firing. Most weapons, by the way, have a bit of a zoom feature, so you can get a better, improve your aim. And obviously the human shields can die. The reloading of the guns when you're using a human shield goes a lot faster and it leaves you a lot less vulnerable than in Hitman Blood Money. But obviously that game was going for realism to some extent. It's a clone killer. And this one isn't necessarily going that much for realism, except for anatomical realism, because there are a lot of bones to break in this game. You can quick kill pretty much everyone if you run up to them, again, except for bosses, and there are a couple of different ways, and it might depend on the weapon you're holding, like a quick kill with a shotgun might be breaking their neck by holding the barrel, you know, you grab them and do this on them. Or you might just shoot them with the gun, whichever gun. So, you know, quick killing is a good way to mix up to keep that combo meter rising. The weapons are as follows. The pistol, you start out with the trusty 45s. You get Desert Eagles and these long revolvers that I don't quite remember what they're called, but they are really kick-ass. Then there is also a tiny SMG submachine gun and all of these are under the pistol category.
By the way, all the weapons in this are useful. They're just not all useful in the same places or in the same ways. But there's not a single gun in this game that is just there so they could say, hey, we have this gun in the game. I'm not sure exactly how many it is, but it might not be more than maybe ten. And, like I said, you can only carry two types at the same time. But the guns always matter. There's always use for them. And you have to be strategic about it so that you're not carrying a gun that's bad for that situation. And the... It, it really keeps the arcade style of it going. You know, there's no switching weapon between ten different ones. Oh, what do I want to kill with now? No, if you run out of bullets for the gun, you might want to replace it with some other type of gun. Or, you know, you have to find some ammo. And if you do run completely out of them, you can still... You you can grab and use a human shield. You can quick kill. They, you know, you don't need guns for that. The Punisher doesn't need guns for killing. Not at short range. The long-range weapons are an AK-47, a grenade launcher, the sniper I mentioned earlier also, a flamethrower, a fully automatic shotgun, don't you just love the sound of that? Also a regular shotgun, and yes you can dual wield fully automatic shotguns, this game is nice. And there is also the knife that... I don't know if this was because there is that brief bit in the film where he uses knives quite freely, but you can enter the so-called slaughter mode, and in that you throw knives by pressing the fire button. And you can also quick kill at short range with the knives. And I think you're basically invulnerable during the slaughter mode. There is a meter that you have to fill before you can enter slaughter mode, and then it will gradually empty, and when it reaches the bottom, you'll leave slaughter mode. You fight street thugs, mafia, Russian Mafia, I think, and, excuse me, the Japanese Mafia, I guess. There are a couple of bosses, including the Russian, and it's a pretty decent fight, I would say. You know, it's a physical fight, and I wasn't sure how they were going to do it, because you mostly shoot in this. There isn't really, other than the interrogation, you don't beat people, you know, you either grab them and move around with them, or you quick kill them if you do anything to them at short range. That doesn't include a gun. But they made it work. You can also pick up these short range weapons, like wrench, or, you know, things of that basic nature. There's also a television that you can, if you can get close enough to a guy, you can slam it down over his head. And these short-range weapons all have quick kills attached to them. You can sometimes also throw the weapon, but usually what you'll want to do is use the quick kill associated with it. The controls are very nice and easy. You get into the game pretty much immediately. There's a lot of slaughter in this game, so it's a good way to get out aggression. And it's surprisingly fun to replay. I've completed the game, I don't know, three or four times. There are a lot of cameos, maybe too many, by other Marvel frequent faces. This manages to keep it 
pretty fresh throughout in spite of the fact that the gameplay can basically be boiled down to kill people either you know at a distance or a short range with a fairly limited arsenal all things considered and you know you're you're killing all the time you're constantly you know slaying people but it manages to keep it reasonably fresh and you get to go to several interesting locations I already mentioned the zoo the zoo of New York I believe there is this isolated island that you fight your way through over a couple of levels there are headquarters of the various foes, the higher level foes, because that's that's the delicious thing about the Punisher. It's not, you know, spending a lot of time getting to the right one. He's a bit like, I think, Porter from Payback in that manner, you know. If he wants to kill someone, he's just going to go for the kill. So you will confront several of the chiefs in this, and... Yeah, the you do fight the Nucci family, if that's how you pronounce it, from Welcome Back Frank, that both this and the movie from 2004 are partial adaptations of. This is more of an adaptation of it, because in this you really do kill the people that Frank kills in the comic. It follows the story a bit of the way. But there are others than the Nucci family that you fight in this. It generally does feel like there are a couple of campaigns where you're taking on the different families, different crime bosses, you know, because Frank, he likes to pull the root. He likes to pull the root out when it comes to crime. You know, go for the guy or the gal in charge of the crime in a certain area and take their head off, quite literally sometimes. Other than the Russian, you fight Jigsaw, you fight Bushwhacker, and those are about it overall. The length is appropriate. This uses the voice of Thomas Jane for the Punisher. But fortunately they did go for the bulkier look from the comic. Thomas Jane just does quite well. He really nails the brooding, dark vigilante. More so than in the movie, although he did do pretty well in that also. And part of that was also the script. Here the script is more like, you know, the Punisher we know from the comics. The voice for Molly, I think that's her name, you know, who works with Detective Soap, is way off. I don't know what they did there, but she sounds like, what's her name, Bonnie something, that singer, you know, with it's a heartache. Yeah, I didn't think that Molly had smoked quite that many cigarettes and I wouldn't think that if she had that voice she would be as attractive to soap as she is in the comics. There is a single basically CGI cutscene and it keeps to the feel and the look of the comics. They don't try to make him look like a completely normal human being, you know. So that works really well, and it kicks a lot of ass. I don't think you can really claim that it doesn't, at least. There are several extras in the game. There are a lot of unlockables, like comic covers, and flashbacks, various things. There okay, they're mostly for, like, you know, big fans and such, but 
there are also a lot of ways to play this game. Unfortunately, none of them are multiplayer, but I don't know how they would have made that work anyway, unless it was like a co-op thing, so yeah. But other than the regular mode, you every time you finish a level, you unlock that level's challenge mode. And the challenge modes are kind of interesting because they're always something different. It can be kill this particular boss with only headshots, it can be complete a certain level in this amount of time, you know, various things like that. And they're always challenging. You know, there are various levels of how challenging they are. Some feel really impossible. But they're, you know, they keep you in the game for at least a little bit longer. And many of the levels also have, I don't remember exactly what they're called, but they're basically like a deathmatch kind of thing where you have to stay alive as long as you can and get as many points as you can. Basically, enemy goons keep spawning and you're locked in this limited area that is directly from the level or looks like it could be from the level that you completed to unlock it and there isn't really a time limit it's just that when you die you're dead there's no retrying other than starting over on that attempt and sometimes you have to get a lot of points so you have to do really well not get hit be nice and creative with kills you'll find that it can be difficult to keep a human shield for terribly long because not so much necessarily that it'll be shot at but you'll run out of ammo and suddenly you won't have anything and you'll just be standing with a dude in front of you and no guns to use from behind him and you might have to grab another human shield and they might be armed so yeah I think that's basically what there is to say about the game, so that was my spoiler for review of the 2004 rushed and corners cut video game adaptation of The Punisher from 2004 movie. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.